So I would like to introduce the CEO of Intentful, Marina Petrova, and she's gonna dive into the world of AI for us. And so I'm gonna be taking notes, come on up. Hello everyone. Okay, so AI. Um, how many of you have used ChatGPT? Okay, everyone, that makes it so much easier. Good, so our session today is about the practical use of AI. And I would like to emphasize the word practical. It's not going to be what uh, prompts you should be using the ChatGPT, but really, what are the things to know for starting to use AI in your work? Uh, and there are honestly so many, and I want to walk, but there is no mic, and if I use that mic, then I will get discoordinated, so I'll just bear with me. So, um, three things. Uh, there are so many other things that I want to talk to you uh, about today and share what we learned about AI and how we are using it for our clients for travel space as well, but I'll focus on three things. Practical tips, use cases, and some of the results that we have from the clients that have been using AI in their work for almost two years now. Uh, a year ago, I was on this stage. Well, it was in Orlando. Uh, but uh, Intentful was one of the bright, shiny new objects. And I honestly couldn't wait to tell the world and everyone how cool that is, how uh, efficient, how productive AI is. and. In addition to the efficiencies that AI brings, at that time we already knew that it has a number of limitations and it has a number of things that you need to take into account once you start using AI in your work. And one of the things, and I'm sure once you've you know, all used ChatGPT, you know this, uh, it's important for AI to know your brand. It's for your business, your destination, because if it doesn't, it will be making things up and we'll talk a little bit about it. So how difficult is it to actually teach AI or teach uh, the AI model to know your destination? Another thing that happened a year ago, as I was boarding the plane to Orlando, I received an email from the professor at University of Oxford, because Bruce and I were doing guest speaking sessions there on the practical use of AI. So as I was boarding my plane to a tourism summit last year, the Oxford professor asked us, if we can train the GPT-3 model on the style of uh, William Shakespeare, uh, Jane Austen, Winston Churchill, and Oscar Wilde for the Oxford Union debate. A year ago, it was a huge thing. So it took two hours and 55 minutes to get from New York City to Orlando, and fortunately JetBlue has great internet connectivity. So while on the flight, um, I was able to work on training the model, and of course there was a team that was also involved in this. Um, so we used the works that were in public domain, and we then used a mix of fine-tuned AI model and core GPT-3 to create content in the styles of these authors. The reason I'm mentioning this is that once you start using AI in your work, think about it. Think that you don't just use chat GPT or any other GPT platform, but you teach it to know your destination, your facts, your style, and it's really easy. And as technologies advance, it will be easier and easier to do that. But now to the basics. So how does AI actually know what content to create? I'm not going to surprise you with showing things like this when you tell AI what you want it to do and in seconds it provides you with some of the information. Yes, it needs to be fact-checked, but uh, it's okay. I mean, depending on how you want to use it. No surprises here. But let's take a look at this. So the way AI defines what goes into that output is it predicts uh, the, word, the next word based on what it was trained on. Think about it for a second. So it has a data set, and it uses um, probability to understand what it is. I'll show you. The same prompt, and, but this time you'll see what the probability is for each of the words. Why this is important? It's important as you keep in mind how and where you want to use it, you can understand what kind of output you will get. This can be adjusted on the model level, but this is just to give you an idea why you are getting this or that result. 
Uh, so now to the practical tips. Uh, and these are based on the thousands of pieces of content that we produced over the last year and lots of things that we learned uh, through practice. So the first one, and I cannot emphasize this enough, so the P in GPT stands for pre-trained. It is not real time. It is, or at least yet, not real, yet real time. It is a finite data, data set that is currently only through September 2021. So when you have questions about why AI makes things up, why uh, it is incorrect information, it because it continues predicting the next best word based on the data that it was trained on, and it sounds so real because it chooses what fits best. At the same time, it will be made up. At least for now, again, GPT, P stands for pre-trained. Uh, if there is no matching data in the training data set, it will be making things up, again, by predicting what I just said. Uh, an example that we have from earlier when we just started, so GPT-3 was trained through 2019 at that moment, and we were working on a project for a client uh, where we had needed a description for the December 2021 event. And AI came back with this description that in uh, Christmas Carol, uh, Scrooge was a cyborg and the ghost of his future self. And it actually went QA, quality assurance quoted, and it was never published. But for a second, I personally thought that maybe that is actually a new sci-fi adaptation that is being staged. Um, and we did share it with the producer. He said, no, 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 not yet. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so, but, um, so I said it is not yet um, uh, real time. What's changing now is you may have seen the chat GPT plugins announcement. A plugin allows you to, let me use the word hook, uh, your content with chat GPT content. What that means is first, and it's like not about content creation so much, but more about co the content distribution. What you can do is you have your content available to the users of ChatGPT, and you can also now do it vice versa, and you can have ChatGPT in your instance. The first one of the first examples that I saw was for Expedia, uh, and they announced that they now have it both ways. It's actually still in alpha. It's not live, I think, or at least not all of it is live. And this is going to be huge. There was a question about trends, and I think this will be one of the trends that we will be seeing um, this year and the next year, as search will be changing. The way people use um, apps and websites will be changing because there will be no need to be browsing through all the pages and everything if you can just ask a smart, not a chatbot, but really a natural language uh, assistant to find the information that you want. Um, we're building a, uh, I'll skip that part, sorry. Okay, so the first one was, remember, GPT, P is pre-trained. The second one is you can do more for less. And because you already played with chat GPT, you know how fast that is, uh, but I would like to encourage you to actually really do, do is key here. Online, your company is really a needle in a very large haystack, and there is more and more content, there are more and more channels, it's more and more difficult to get attention of the audiences. But 80% of traffic to travel and hospitality sites comes from unpaid sources. Um, there is an interesting report, uh, it used to be Hootsuite, now it's GWI, I think, where they have like 300, 500 slides of different information. I highly encourage you to download that. Uh, and it does have several slides on travel too. So 80% of traffic is organic. And that traffic is throughout all multiple channels. So it's really not enough to just have one page that talks about the destination or attraction or anything. You really have to be in every channel. And AI is perfect for creating that channel. And again, I would encourage you to train your, to have your own AI model for that. But even by just using ChatGPT, you can achieve a lot. And it's not about just creating content, it's also the productivity that you can have. It's the um, creating the content plans, outlines for the articles, uh, dynamic variations of ads, and really anything that you can think of. Uh, and I'd like to show you an example. So uh, if you haven't tried it for not just content creation, but for some things like content plan, so here I'm telling AI that it is a social media manager at Happy Places DMO. I had to make one up. Uh, so, and I am explaining that it is a fictional brand because it needs to understand, it being AI, needs to understand that it's not a real thing. 
and I'm asking to create a content plan for every day in June for Instagram, and I'm asking it to create actual posts with emoji and suggest image concept. A year ago, when I was here on the stage, that would be like a science fiction. Now, the technology advanced a lot, and you can get this in under a minute. This would only be possible with GPT-4, uh, maybe a little bit 3.5, but really 4, and 4 is still a little bit slow, however, Ah, I'm also suggesting that that's for the domestic visitors looking for a weekend getaway. And um, this is a little slow, again, because it is GPT-4 and they're still testing a lot of things. But in under a minute, you do get that content plan for June with emoji for every single day and with ideas on what the caption should be. If you are not using it for your content planning, I would encourage you to start using that right now because, you know, just one minute. Yes, it will require editing. Yes, it will require a lot of your attention, but it would still be so much faster than doing it the traditional way. What I'm doing next is I'm taking one of the um, phrases from the content plan and saying create an SEO friendly article and then uh, saying what that should be and adding the keywords, happy places, food tour, farm to table dining and so on. And you can also connect the data insights to the AI platform and make it more or less real time so that there is no guessing involved, but you know what the keywords should be. And again, in under a minute, you have a, an article, a blog post. Yes, it does require editing, but still it is fantastic and that helps you create having your content distributed in all those channels that I was showing in just several slides ago. It's not just creating content. So because we're in a fictional brand, Happy Places, uh, I asked AI to create a list of features uh, for a hotel. And it came up with this beautiful ones. I love the flying carpet and dragon rides and everything. And then I'm asking AI to summarize this into a description for a hotel's page on the OTA website. Um, and the same thing in under a minute we get, um, and while it loads. So it's important to have different descriptions for each of the OTAs, for each of the web website uh, properties that you have because Google likes it when the content is unique. And with AI, you can do this in, again, under a minute. Let's see what it comes back with. And I have, okay. So similar thing. In under a minute, you get a beautiful summary, in this case with rainbow drinks and flying carpets, and then you can just take this and uh, summarize it for another OTA. Uh, so again, content creation, all, all sorts of things. If you have questions, if Google allows AI-based content, they actually made a statement saying, uh, we don't care how it is created, as long as it is helpful. I mean, they used much better language, but uh, as long as it is uh, in line with EA, EEAT and it is high quality. Uh, you can also use AI for content uh, updates, but also important for languages. The languages are much, much better than it was just you know three months ago. I have an example here, but because of time, I'll skip it. I took the same one from the OTA, and I'll be happy to share this presentation. Reach out uh, if you would like to have a copy, I'll share it. And I just take one and translate it into Spanish, and it's done perfectly well. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is brand safety. If you are using ChatGPT, and I'm not saying you shouldn't, you have to keep in mind that all the information that goes as prompts and outputs goes out there to train the model. And it's actually be very, very careful with what kind of information you put in, especially personal information, data privacy, and all of that. If you work with an API, that is not the case until you actually want to give that information to OpenAI, uh, the data privacy is taken care of. Uh, the next slide is where you have your bells ready, but I'm actually not doing the sales pitch, but uh, don't do it alone. It takes time to introduce it in your organization. It does uh, require everyone to get comfortable. Yes, there is a lot of hype, but once you actually start using it in day-to-day -day work, there are a number of steps to be done. Uh, we are launching a platform called Happy Places uh, that would be AI content creation platform for DMOs specifically. 
with the templates done for the DMOs uh, in the, your language, uh, in your style and voice and all of that. Again, not so much time, and I don't want you to start doing the bell thing. So, but it's going to be really affordable, and I'll skip this one. But if you are interested, please let us know. And no bells, sorry. <laughs> so, uh, and the last one is the embracing the change part. We started with um, AI in June 2021. And we were really lucky to have several clients who said, yes, we are ready to give it a try. Uh, we started working with the Schubert organization, with Broadway Inbound, and since then we have been producing content for 28 Broadway shows and the Metropolitan Opera and, and um, New York City Ballet. Uh, and uh, we also work with Hotel Planner. They are very heavily content-driven, 300,000 pages. We recently started working with Hilton. It's interesting with them because it's a slightly different type of how they use AI. It's not just for content creation, but lots of other things that AI is capable of. And we just completed the very first project with Will and Sherry for uh, Brand USA. So uh, I, I have some slides with the results that I want to share you, with you. But the reason it works is because you combine the data insights that you have. Everyone now has a lot of data. You have your own AI model that is trained, and by combining the two together with the efficiency and speed that you have just seen, you get content at scale that is hyper, super relevant to your brand communication goals and to audience interests. And the result, you have engaged audience and you get the results that you want to have. Uh, so some of those results, obviously COVID, <laughs> you've seen here, but as someone said, yes, it's past us, behind us. So uh, AI content is a half, almost a half of all uh, content on the website right now. And we continue seeing um, growth months after months after months. The same for actually multiple industries, uh, at least 50% in cost savings, at least five times faster from brief to live, uh, and continuous traffic increase. Uh, for the OTA client we have here, uh, also they continue growing at least 40% in organic traffic every month. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions after the event if you have, because I understand there can be a lot of questions about it, but it works. Give it a try. Give it a try. Just make sure that it is relevant and that it is in line with, um, with what you do. And this is not a sales uh, slide. <laughs> this is where I meant to say that uh, Bruce and I, we really love sharing everything about AI, and we do a lot of educational sessions. and. Again, if you have questions, reach out. We are on LinkedIn. We're here until the end uh, of the event and happy to answer any questions you might have about AI in general or AI as it relates to your um, organization. Thank you. Stop.